It's ten past eleven here on Triple J, and you're listening to Artery. Are you listening, Bronze? I am the Night Rider. <laughs> I'm a fuel injected suicide machine. So there you have it on Triple J, a pretty damn classic quote from a very classic film called Mad Max. Thundered onto the cinemas in 1979, spawned a couple of uh, sequels, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, and then Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And a fellow called Adrian Martin has written a book all about his responses to Mad Max. He joins me in the studio. Hello, how are you? Hi for now. And also film gal Megan Spencer is here as well. Hello, Megan Spencer. And Mad Max devotee. <laughs> Hello. Mad Max is also here in spirit. He's sitting in the corner. Hi, Mad Max. He never leaves us. <laughs> We're talking about Mad Max, of course, tonight in Archery. And Adrian, I mean, obviously you've written a book about Mad Max. It's a short, sweet book all about your responses to this film. To start off with, though, I really wanted to know about when and where you first saw Mad Max, and what was that experience like for you? Mm. I was pretty much there uh, when the film was was first released in cinemas. So, nineteen seventy nine. I was I was nineteen, and uh, yeah, I was kind of there the the first session at uh, you know Village wherever it was screening, and it, it blew me away. Like it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. Really, what was it about the film that really blew you away? I mean, really, the energy. You know, the energy of the film, and it's it's violent energy. Like this this <laughs> raw violent energy it had. Oh, I loved it. Um, I obviously didn't get a chance to see it back in 1979 because I wasn't 19, but I, you know, I saw it on video and had a similar kind of reaction. But Megan, what was what was your response when you first saw it? Well, I saw it in 1983. It was the last day of high school. <laughs> My first boyfriend uh, of, of the time uh, took me to the drive-in and we saw Mad Max One and Two in a double. Oh, that's a date movie and, and a I half. Think it, I think it was... Oak, no, we didn't touch each other for the entire time. He smoked a lot and I just sat there going, oh, my God. So it you was were completely amazing. gobsmacked by the experience. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I wasn't really, really, really into film as much as I am now back then, but um, I certainly knew something pretty different was happening. It, it was probably the first Australian film that I remember me actually thinking my impression of it being I've never seen an Australian film like this one before. I mean, I wasn't around for the Stones and those sorts of movies in the, you know, early uh, 70s and and late uh, 60s. So my film consciousness probably around that stage was just starting to form. So I think I've been kind of lucky being blooded by Mad Max 1 and 2 and I've never really looked back. <laughs> I mean, there are so many films that have been released in the country and the book series that you've written, Mad Max, uh, about the trilogy on is all about our responses or writers' responses to classic Australian films. Why did you choose Mad Max as as the film to talk about? Yeah, well, uh, uh, firstly because I, I really think, that especially the first Mad Max film, is really, I think, one of the best Australian films. And that's what the series is all about. It's meant to be about the Australian film classics, not just the ones that are interesting or worthy or, you know, but something that a, that a writer, me in this case, actually thinks is great, you know, will get up on a mountain and say... This is a great film that could compete with anything anywhere in the world. And I really do think that with Mad Max. And not only is it a great film, but uh, it's an incredibly original film. Like, it took things from a, a million movies, but, but, it, but it made something unique out of the mixture. And very Australian too, isn't it? Yes, really, and, and unselfconsciously so. Yeah. Like I don't think George Miller, Byron Kennedy, and, and the cast and crew went into it saying, "Now we're going to make a very Australian film." I mean, I think that's the last thing on their minds. Mm. But this is always the secret: when it's when it's the last thing on your mind, then you do something that's authentically local of your culture, and that's what I really think Mad Max is. Adrian, in your book, in your Australian. String, screen classic, we can call it that now. It's sure. been published under the moniker The Mad Max Movies. You say that particularly Mad Max 1 and 2 were influential on world cinema in a way that no other film or pair of films have been in Australian film history. Um, why is that? Mm. This is a, a controversial claim because people say to me, you know, but what about Crocodile Dundee? What about Picnic and Hanging Rock? What about Moulin Rouge? But as fine as those films may be, depending on where you stand, they're in fact, they have not influenced other films. 
uh, the Mad Max films have absolutely influenced hundreds and possibly thousands of films around the world. And for, uh, all across the board from things like, you know, Waterworld and various sort of big budget sort of post-apocalypse movies. Rain of Fire. Yeah, stuff like yep, that. But yep. then there's like, you know, a hundred uh, Italian exploitation movies, cheap things. Hong Kong cinema, a sort of action fantasy cinema, indelibly influenced by the Mad Max series. And I don't think we've seen the end yet of films that, that are influenced by the Mad Max Mad Max series. Yeah, there been not, not, sorry, just to finish off on that one, not to mention the films of Jess Franco from Spain. Weren't, weren't there a whole slew of like Mad Max complete clones coming out of Spain in the, in the five years after it was it yes, was, came out? Spain yeah. and Italy, like yeah. all these films with titles that have, you know, uh, barbarians of the year <laughs> 3000 and, you know, titles like that. Yeah. Are, you know, it's always <laughs> gangs fighting over the oil in the sand dunes and all of yeah. that is completely comes from Mad Max. But also there were left wing sort of Mad Max clones, you know, and it's like like, this is a great way to, to dramatise the class struggle, you know, the, the, the lower class and the upper class fighting for that oil in the sand dunes. I mean, there are so many films. Marauders. Marauders. I was just going to ask, I mean, out of all those films that have been influenced by Mad Max, have any of them actually been as successful for you, at least as a film experience, as Mad Max? No, no, I'd, I'd say not. I'd say uh, the first Mad Max and Mad Max 2 uh, as well, um, they, they really have got something together that, you know, other films have copied and emulated. And I mean, for instance, when I see um, Matrix Reloaded, I mean, that is a film, the famous 14 minute, you know, chase sequence, which mm. is absolutely magnificent, mm. uh, is completely modelled on what the Wachowski brothers have learnt from watching Mad Max 2 probably more times than I have, which is saying something. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but even there, I think Wachowski brothers did a great job, but, uh, but, but their film does not manage to capture the particular magic of, of the Mad Max The series. handmade 15-minute end scene in Mad Max 2, no mm. visual effects, lots of special effects as in people putting their bodies on the line. Yeah, yeah. Quite extraordinary. Now, Adrian, the Australian audience response and indeed the world response to Mad Max 1 and 2 when they both came out was uh, pretty big and quite significant. And it was acknowledged by the audience here. And yet the inverse was probably true from uh, Australia's critics at mm. the time of around 1979, especially with the first Mad Max film. Um, why is that? Why did they dismiss it so mm. outright? And do you reckon they're eating their words now? <laughs> I think they'd have to be. I mean, in my book, I, 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 uh, I rather cruelly quote uh, people, including uh, Philip Adams, uh, Sandra Hall, uh, Martha DeBose. Uh, uh, he names German. names. Yes, indeed. Well, you ha you've got to. And, and they're you know, still around too. Yes, I know. And, and they all said things like, you know, this film has the rare and heady smell of a money maker, which was not a compliment. And, uh, you know, the film peddles the pornography of violence and death. And this film hasn't got a single thought to bless itself with. And, and uh, no higher motive can be ascribed to this movie. I mean, basically, it was a sort of a, you'd have to say, a middle brow response to these films. Partly, I think, because these critics were not really steeped in, you know, exploitation movies, B-movie genre movies. They weren't really into John Carpenter and George Romero and all this stuff from the 60s and 70s. So when an Australian film did this, they just didn't quite know how to compute, you know, this, this film. I mean, it was just like nothing they'd seen. Was it a bit of a negation of the cinema of sensation? Because the cinema of sensation, like thrills movies or action mm. films, which, you know, goes it's part of that does have a bad name, doesn't it? It's like it's cheap and beneath us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, and Australian films to that time, you know, we think of the, the Picking and Hanging Rocks, the Caddies, uh, My Brewing Careers and so on, some of which, of course, are terrific films. Yeah. Um, but basically their they're values uh, are values that, you know, we get from, from good literature, from good theatre, from good from acting and England. so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, England in yeah. a word. And... Um, uh, and but Mad Max did not play by those rules. Mm. I don't think it was deliberately wanting to flout those rules or break those conventions, but it just was coming from another space. On Triple J, Adrian Martin is with us at the moment, as well as film gal Megan Spencer. We're talking about the Mad Max trilogy because Adrian's actually written a book all about the, the three films in the Mad Max series. And uh, if you're somebody who has had a, a significant religious experience, perhaps the first time you saw... <laughs> Mad Max or, you know, saw Mel Gibson walking down that street in his leathers. Oh, you're in the back seat of the drive-in. I was in the front seat. Or maybe you bought a V8 engine or something like that oh, simply because yeah. you watched a Mad Max film. We do want to hear from you about that experience or maybe you just completely were bored by it like the fellow I bought, um, borrowed the video from yesterday <laughs> at the video store just can't, couldn't stand the film when he first saw it. So give us a call, one 800 and tell us all about your Mad Max experiences and you can ask Adrian Martin any questions about Mad Max. 
1-800-555-36. Give us a call.